All right, welcome everyone. This is a uh, first stream of uh, Captain of Industry, and uh, I'm Captain Marek. Uh, in the chat, you can see Captain Philip F and Zaf as well. And uh, the reason for this stream was mainly to introduce you to our map editor and see what you can do because it's a um, pretty complex tool and uh, uh, it's different than what you can see in other games. Uh, as you can see in this uh, image right in front of you, this is a Golden Peak map. And all those little nodes you can see there are procedural nodes that generate this terrain. So this whole map was basically created out of uh, like 30 or 40 nodes. And uh, I'll show you how all this is done. So uh, when I exit this mode, I will actually load a new map because I want to show you how everything is done from scratch, not on the map which is loaded. So when you open the map editor, this is how it looks like. It is a fairly basic map, as you can see. Not much to see there. Uh, on the left, you can immediately see uh, the load window where you can actually load all the built-in maps, which uh, you can see how they are done and you can edit them, expand them to your liking. But today I would like to actually do it from scratch, so I'll, I'll close this load window. And here you can see the basic user interface. On the, on the bottom, here are all the things you want to interact with, like creating resources and forests. Uh, on the bottom left here, we have all the overlays. You can turn on the terrain grid or turn off the fog or turn off the ocean if you, if you wish to see the bare island. On the top are some main menu and save and load uh, things. For example, load menu is right here, I just closed. So the editor is fairly complex, but the complexity is uh, cleverly hidden from you at start. So let's start at level one, the easiest thing, how to make a map. And that's just to interact with these menus over here. So for example, if I'd like to make a mountain, I click mountain, I can move it with this handle. As you can see, kind of previews me roughly how it's going to look like. And when I like the position, I click Apply Changes. And if I escape out of the preview, you can see we have a mountain. And it's looking pretty good already. Of course, you might want to make the mountain different shape. So that's what these handles are for. So there's this polygon, as you can see, with the blue lines. And you can kind of drag it to make it into the shape you, you like. So... You can make it long range like this. If you need more control points, you can add them by clicking on these uh, middle points and you can always remove them by right clicking again. So you can, you can already see how this can be made into some interesting looking uh, mountain ranges and shapes. So I can click apply changes and that's my mountain range. Now, in the capital of industry, of course, we need resources to mine. So there is this mineable resource uh, menu. So for example, I want some iron ore. As you can see, it looks very similar to what we had before. So I can just configure uh, as before and apply changes. And I'm going to have some iron ore right there. I can do other things. I can do, for example, groundwater, which is... Uh, we call it virtual resource. It doesn't really show anything on the map, but it's it's there. So you can configure in this right window, you can configure its radius and position with the handle. And there's also things like forests, so you can place a mixed forest. Forests look a little differently than other ones because they are generated kind of around the polygon rather than strictly inside so we can kind of give it a suggested area and the first will show up there if i click apply changes you're gonna get some trees now and this is basically how we make a map so uh, one big thing is the plateau feature which you can make more of so for example if i want to make another plateau i can go to the terrain features click the plateau Maybe here I can make uh, one which is a little elevated. On the preview, you can see that the transparent things are under the terrain and the brighter ones are 
above the terrain transparent below terrain. So I can make a little plateau here, which is kind of elevated a certain height above the terrain. And this is how you're going to get a little elevation plateau. Uh, very interesting thing is, for example, when you're making a map to see uh, how hard it is to get to this plateau, right? Because uh, you would have to make ramp, excavate it, or dump ramp to get that up there. But sometimes you can just go around. For example, here, I'm pretty sure the trucks will be able to just drive around here. And maybe you don't want that. Right. Maybe you want to make this plateau strictly inaccessible at the beginning, so you can either make it higher, just make sure it's not going to be accessible, or use other features in the editor to kind of make this work. So uh, in order to check, I would use this overlay on the bottom to check the truck pathability. And as you can see now, trucks are not able to pass, which is what I wanted. Uh, if I would like to make them pass, well, that's great because we have a, a RAM feature. So RAM feature is basically this polygon which snaps terrain and makes it smooth in between all the points. So for example, I want to make a ramp here. And now the trucks can freely pass to that plateau, if that's what I want. So this is basically how the map is being created. So you can keep adding more resources, Keep adding more copper ore. If you want to make the mountain a little lower, you can put it into the ground. If you want to make it a little higher, you can just drag it out of the ground. And slowly you can kind of build up your map like this. And you can explore all the menus. You can put crude oil resource. You can configure how much crude oil is there in the menu. Uh, for example, there could be 50,000. There you go. And then you can put some dunes for sand. Sand doesn't grow on mountains, so we have this dunes feature. Uh, and you can even drag those individual points to make it kind of sloped like that. As you can see, beautiful dunes. Beaches, beaches are a little more complicated. I'll, I'll show you how to do beaches later, but uh, for the basic map, this is how it is. So there's this node right here, which is called starting location. And that's where you start. And you need to make sure that this one is green because otherwise the, in, the initial settlement wouldn't be able to build. So probably this map is a little too small. I would have to remove some trees to be able to fit the starting location here. And uh, you need to find a position where it's gonna be green so that the initial location fits. So right here, for example, is green, which means here I can start the map. So this is all good. Um, and if you are kind of happy with the map as is, you can click on this publish button and here you can see all the important things regarding the map name. So I can call this level one. I can put some description. I can put my author. And uh, important thing is thumbnails. So we have a built-in feature for thumbnail taking in the map. And the thumbnails will take the screenshot of the map as you can see it in the camera, but without all the UI and handles and all those kind of things. So I can take a thumbnail, it kind of shows it here. I can maybe you know, take it a little closer if I wanted to again. You know, just take nice thumbnails as you, as you want. That the thumbnail shows up in the map selection in the game or in, or in our new community hub. You can also take a screenshot, which is like the big picture. You can take multiple screenshots, actually, if you want to show up your map from different angles. Uh, of course, the more screenshots you take, the larger the map file is going to be. Uh, and uh, when you're happy, you can even delete them if you, if you don't think. I think it's not too nice. Uh, then map file name. Uh, i probably call it similar to the map name. And I click Publish Map. And... It says publish maps successfully at the bottom, which means that if I go to game right now, uh, which I'm gonna go to exit to main menu, new game, 
there's my level one map. And if I go through our new difficulty settings real quick and start it, there you go. We have a brand new map. Well, this is probably a pretty tough one to, to start on since there's not much to do. So let's, let's expand it, right? This is a very simple map, but there is much more to the editor than, than just this. So if I go back to main menu, I go to the, back to the editor. Now I can use my feature to just load the map immediately. I just create it. So here's our map. The problem is it's too small. As you can see, this red border, that's the map. That's it. That's all we get. So as you can see, that's super small. So we can make it larger. There is resize map window where you can resize the map to any size you like. We have some predefined sizes up to 4K by 4K. Uh, I'll probably do uh, a tiny map for now, which is still much larger than we have before. And as you can see, the map kind of resizes uh, it doesn't center the resources at first, so I can also, at the same time, do offset to kind of center it, which way I like. Maybe I can do a little larger, maybe 1500. That's good. Um, roughly this. I think I like that. So if I click resize, it will actually restart the editor because map changing is quite intensive procedure. So now we have a lot of plays to play with, a lot of space. So I think let's start start the transition into level two uh, of the complexity of the editor because so far we just place a bunch of nodes, resize them and, and that's pretty much it. But there is so much more. So when I open the UI you can see on the right side there's a bunch of options to, to choose from. And those options allow a lot of customization. So for example, uh, I can select a resource and choose what is it made of. I can choose golden ore. So instead of choosing here, I can just place whatever and then change it in the menu. And if I switch it, you can immediately see I suddenly have golden ore. There's this important thing little checkbox here, ignore as resource, which was checked because it used to be stone before, now it's golden ore, and I would like to actually mark that on the map, because in the in the map you can actually see the resource locations in the game. So all these blue handles are resource resources. If I check this, it's going to be hidden. It's going to be hidden from resource list, so you can kind of choose which one you want to show to the players or, or not. Um, and then there is uh, many more things. So, for example, if I want to make really big mountain of copper, for example, right? If I drag it up, well, you can see it's kind of if I apply changes, even it's kind of ugly, right? This is the, the mountain ends before it blends with the terrain, right? So, for example, you can increase the below surface max depth to let's say 100. And shape inversion also, because shape inversion is basically when this shape inverts into this negative mountain below. And I want it to be also much lower than 20, maybe also 100. And suddenly I have a mountain that is super big and nicely blends with the terrain. Right, so for example, if you would like to make a resource which is super deep, you can keep it on the surface like this. But increase those two numbers to have just, you know, tiny little uh, hill here, but look what is under the terrain. It's gigantic. So this is how we do it, by changing those parameters. And each parameter, by the way, have a lot of explanations. You can read all about it in those hover tips. So whenever you see this icon, you can see what it's doing. Right, so for example, one kind of a uh, tricky one is, well, I probably leave the tricky ones for the level three. I think that the, let's keep it simple for now at level two. So this is, this is parameters here. The plateaus also have a different set of parameters. Um, and uh, one of the parameters that is quite important in the plateaus is the base height. So how high is the, the flat part, right? So I can make it 20. 
to make it a high plateau. Uh, and uh, there is a couple of checkboxes here, which are quite important. Uh, one is the ocean floor contribution. So let me quickly explain the ocean floor. So when I hide the ocean, you can see there is some ocean floor. Uh, by the way, you can see a little artifact here. That's because every time you apply changes, it only applies them in this region you just changed. And if it affects something further, it's going to be uh, kind of visually broken, but you can not worry about it. And if you want to fix it, you can always regenerate the entire map here. And it'll fix everything on the map without an issue. So you know, don't worry about those temporarily broken things. So this is how it looks like uh, without ocean. And you can see there is some kind of shape and it kind of goes towards the coast, up. Uh, so how, to, how does that work? So basically each plateau contributes, like a, attracts the ocean and makes it less deep around it. If you would like to make an island, for example, I can, uh, another feature is you can copy a feature, there's a clone. So if I clone this plateau here, and apply changes to the whole map, you can see suddenly the ocean floor will rise up around that area. If you don't want to do that, you can disable contribution to the ocean and you'll get an island which is at, in very deep ocean without contribution to any ocean floor. Right, so this makes a difference. If you would like players to have easy time dumping stuff in the ocean and making more land or not, if you want to make it hard, then do not contribute to the ocean. You can change the surface material. So for example, you can make the whole thing out of sand. You can, by the way, start typing sand. Uh, and that's uh, your sand plateau. Uh, here I think it's a good uh, time to show something with beaches. So. If I make this plateau little, I make a little, make a little corner here, so I can make a nice beach. Yeah, that's right. the The heights here is the same in game. So if you see five or two, there's a number of tiles in game in the terrain in, in, in the designations. It's exactly the, the same numbers, same units. Even those lines on those features, each band is a tile. So those dark bands are every 10. So you can kind of estimate roughly how, how much it is. I'll turn on the ocean so we can see where we get. So a little bit of a nice area and I really like to have beach here. So I'll use the beach preset. The beach preset is little, uh, requires a little bit of handwork because we need to blend the beach with the ocean floor. So first of all, I like to kind of put the beach inside of those mountains, right? And if I just do this, it's gonna look good on the surface, but if I hide ocean, that's not good, right? This is not how beach should look like. So I have to kind of put this one inside of the ocean floor like that and kind of play with it a little bit and make it the way I like. And suddenly I have a nice beach. So if I turn on the ocean again, you can see I have quite nice beach. Oh, JD Plays is here. Welcome JD. Thanks for joining us. I know that in Australia right now is 4 a.m. and uh, we are sorry, but you know, there's too many time zones around the world. So maybe next time we can do a stream, which is a little more Australia and uh, uh, Asia friendly, uh, so for sure. And I think this video will probably be available as well, so people can watch it later. Well, thanks for joining in, appreciate it. Um, uh, so back to our beach. So here is another thing I would like to show you. For example, there's this beach and we have these grassy areas kind of touching it. And I, I would like to have more like a sand on those cliffs instead of grass. Uh, and there's a, a feature called replace material which is perfect for this. You can replace grass with say sand. 
Now, here is a little tricky part where you start to understand a little bit how, a little bit more how the editor works. Because features are generated in a certain order. And as you can see, the grass is actually mixed. It's this lush grass versus this non-lush grass. If I just apply changes now, I've only replaced the normal grass and not the lush grass. So I either have to place it twice and replace both grasses. So if I clone this thing and I replace lush grass with sand as well, that would, that would do the trick that I was trying to achieve to have more sand like this. Or even better is to replace this grass before it gets kind of duplicated into two types of grasses. So in this processing phase, you can see I'll make it process during the grass on rocks phase and I put minus one to be just before that. So now if I replace grass, it, re it should replace both of them. Uh, and it didn't. Let's see. All right, live stream thing. Hmm. For some reason, this doesn't like it. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. The grass on rocks right after that. Not, 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 not before. before that. There is no grass on rocks, right? So. <laughs> Uh, before grass and rocks is generated, uh, there's nothing. So basically, I wanted to do after grass and rocks, before mixed surfaces. Somewhere in, in this area, I wanted to uh, process this thing. So now I can actually make it so that the cliffs look like they are kind of part of the beach and kind of uh, have nice sand on the cliffs. And you can kind of play with it and make it look nice. So that's, that's beaches. Um, one important thing also to consider is that stuff on the ground matters, right? So how it looks underground is important and it's hard to see. For example, how does this sand connect to this mountain? I'm not sure. Uh, so we have this X-ray tool, which is really cool. So this is basically like a cone that's cutting into the terrain and you can see kind of how it looks like. So for example, here I can see, well, I have sand and then I have some grass and then I have some rock. So there's actually a, a grass or dirt below the sand. And if that's okay, that's what I want, that's fine. If not, then suddenly I have to make adjustments, right? So for example, I would like the sand to completely replace everything. Uh, so I click on the sand and there's this only place on top and above. So if I uncheck that, now sand will replace everything which is uh, visible in this area. So if I go to my X-ray tool again, suddenly you see it's all sand. There's no grass, no rocks underneath. Uh, you can use control and wheel to kind of go deeper if you really want to see a little deeper. It's a control wheel on this tool. It's very handy to see what's in, in uh, underneath the surface because you can see for example the cliffs here there's a little grass grass layer on top it's gold right here you see there's gold from this gold mountain underneath this surface so that's, that's very helpful you can also use the standard resource bars overlay which can tell you similar thing but not, not as uh, precise perhaps not for all materials anyway so this is how you can kind of make sure that the map is looking good even underground, which is important once you start mining it, right? So uh, then there is order of operations I already touched on. Basically, you can see that the operations are ordered in some way. And if you have, for example, two mountains and you would like to say, well, I would like this mountain to go after certain, for example, if I would like to have this iron ore to actually generate iron ore inside of this copper mountain, I think currently it is not. Let me let me check. Currently it is actually right. So now the iron is overriding the copper, which is probably what you want. If you don't want it, you 
can always change the sorting priority and those checkboxes. Sorting priority is a little harder to work with, but those checkboxes are probably even better. You can say only place on top and above. So if I check this, then the iron ore is no longer going to be in the copper ore. It's going to be only on top. Uh, if I check only replace existing materials, well, that's an interesting feature. So if I do that, it will kind of replace the iron ore in this volume, but it's not going to make any new volume, right? So you can kind of like change part of mountain to be different resource without changing the shape of the mountain at all. Right, so this is how that works. It's, it's very handy for certain resources. Uh, all right, so that's that's those tools. Now, I did I mentioned before ocean floor and how it works, and there's actually configurations there as well. But ocean floor does not have a handle. So, how do you get to edit features without handles? Those global ones. Well. Let me introduce you to terrain features menu. So this is basically a list of all the features in the editor. And among those you already saw and we clicked on them, for example, there is this beach. I can click edit and that's the same as I click on it. There's also, for example, ocean floor unique. So if I click edit, I suddenly get parameters which I couldn't get anywhere else only here and there's actually lots of interesting parameters so if I turn off the ocean again and if I turn off this things so we have a little better view if I would like to have for example ocean that uh, goes deep so I can say max ocean depth to be 100 and apply changes and let's see what it does now you can see the ocean kind of goes down into very deep uh, heights, but it's still kind of going down slowly, right? It's not immediately 100, it's taking its time. And that's because there's this ocean depth increase rate. So how much depth per distance from coast? So now I have a uh, per 64 tiles to be exact. So I can say, well, maybe it's gonna be 20 now, so super steep. So if I apply changes, Now we are getting much steeper ocean floor. And this is important if you again want to make a map, which is, for example, hard to traverse certain things. You can suddenly make this happen or vice versa. You can say, I want you know, five here. I want super shallow oceans everywhere. I don't really want to be bothered by dumping too much in the ocean. And that's how it works. And this is the settings you can get only in in this then features you can also see the sorting order here what goes after what so you can kind of inspect uh, sorting priority of each feature and you can adjust it if necessary and there is a second similar tab called post processors which is basically a second stage of terrain generation first stage we generate all the features and second all the features get post processed uh, by a bunch of steps. For example, we have this brand new particle erosion, which by the way, I'm really proud of. It's a, it's an awesome feature that makes the mountain look really cool. So if I can disable it, for example, if I really don't want it and regenerate the map and you can see without particle erosion, the mountain looks like this. You know, it's a, no, it's a mountain, but it's not as beautiful. If I enable it, you can immediately see the difference it makes. On the, on the shapes, much more kind of refined and smoothed out and eroded. It has settings too. I would probably not recommend going to them too much, at least not that difficulty level two. Uh, there's lots of, lots of config that you might, you know, you can change, but probably not for beginners at all. Uh, one thing I could mention with erosion, though, is sometimes it's too aggressive. Sometimes, for example, I want to place coal. And coal, we like to do this kind of step shape. 
for Coral to kind of show some kind of layers and kind of make it interesting and unique. And if I place Coral like this, you can see the layers get kind of eroded away. Like it's no longer this shape that I envisioned on the Coral. So if you really want to preserve something and don't get it eroded away, there's a couple of ways. Uh, if I select the erosion tool again, uh, erosion post processor, there is two settings which I would actually encourage you to explore. One is suppress erosion region. So if I click that, I have a region, and in this region, erosion is not going to be uh, performed at all. Right. So I, I apply changes now. You can suddenly see that my call is nice and crisp. If I want it that way, that's great. But if you apply it too widely, of course, the mountain is not going to look as, as good. So if you want to apply this to all coal, though, it's going to be tedious. Like every coal patch, you have to add it. And if the coal patch suddenly is in the mountain, the mountain around it is not going to look good. So instead of that, I actually like the second option a little better, ignore the material. I can say ignore all coal from erosion. And it's going to do exactly what you think it, it would. It would. It would probably look the same as before, but now instead of me drawing a polygon around every feature I want to ignore, all colon map is going to be ignored. So if I place it somewhere else, it's going to be maybe on the beach, colon the beach. Oops, not this one. It's going to be also not eroded, even if it's somewhere else. This is probably a little too high because it's right. One more parameter I wanted to mention in level two is surface cover material. So you can see this coal is very heavily covered with grass. Well, that's mostly because we put grass on flat surfaces, but also because there is a surface cover material grass. So I can even show you to kind of, so you can see what it does. I can put sand on the coal here because it's, the coal is on sand and suddenly the coal is covered with sand partially. So we can, have an effect like that. You can also do it on mountains. So our mountains by default, if I put uh, some maybe limestone mountain here, and if I would like to make it a little deeper, I'm gonna again change this settings so it goes deep. So my limestone mountain is by default covered with rock, right? So you can see there's tiny bit of rocks everywhere around. Uh, some comments suggesting I covered with trash. Sure, fair, sure thing, you can do that. And uh, well, sorry, I just made it out of trash. <laughs> that was the wrong checkbox. If I had limestone and cover it with trash, that would be this one. Uh, so, you know, yeah, you can have a trashed limestone mountain. Uh, and uh, yeah, you can you can go wild with this. It's, it's very handy to kind of a little bit more var variation because having just limestone you can turn it off you can just have this none and then it's going to be just limestone of course the the, the grass is going to be there mm, uh, as well if you also don't want the grass you can always replace material grass with nothing and you can just you know make it bare like that that's also a possibility so with those little tools, you can you can actually achieve quite a lot. I think I wanted to talk. Uh, we talked about ramp. I showed you the ramp. We also have smooth region and flattened region. So flattened region. Sometimes, uh, let me show you a good example of flattened region. So uh, maybe I can make a few a few of these little plateaus. This one is under this. Oh, I have to turn on the ocean. Sorry, we are a little bit low now. Because stuff under the ocean is by default not. Okay, I'll make three plateaus here. And I'll show you. Oh, there was another third one. Here's a third one. Right. So. Nice example for, for flatten that I actually pulled here. I can delete it by, by clicking here as well. If I don't like it anymore, flattened. For example, I would make this uh, corner kind of 
longer and kind of make more more flat area there I can kind of place the flatten there and flatten has uh, two options one you flatten to the minimum for control points which means you're gonna flatten down which if I apply changes now it's gonna kind of flatten this area uh, inside of there I can choose max of all control points which will do the opposite it will flatten to the max or I can even do explicit height so I literally choose I'm gonna flatten to 5.5 and it's gonna do exactly that I'm not even sure maybe 8 which will be a good good height barely visible 10 right you can also see how the flatten is kind of blend it so that's very nicely and you can control the blending distance so transition distance is now 10 if you want to have a steep flatten you can do it much smaller and it's going to be much more harsh uh, flattening on the sides right you can kind of uh, play with this another cool thing about flatten is that you can choose interaction mode so currently now it's in the middle and here it's removing material and here it's adding maybe you would want to just just add you don't want to remove this corner so if you do add only it it only adds right it never removes anything and if you do remove only the other way around it only removes right it, it doesn't add to this plateau so this is all the options and you can again explore the options some of them are self-explanatory some of them are tooltips you can apply surface material so for example if i want to add sand to the added portions uh, I have to choose thickness of maybe five right so now whatever it, the flatten tool added is made out of sand so you can also control control that right and uh, I think one last thing I would like to show which is uh, quite handy is we kind of support blueprints for map editor in, in a way that you can make a tiny map and then import it into your existing bigger map so remember at the beginning we've done we've done the map which was called level one so i can even go to the load menu again choose the level one here and say import select the map and it's going to get imported right in the middle of the screen so i select this and you can see the features are there i apply and boom we have the map from level one uh, right there uh, but imagine well this is not what you wanted you want it a little bit different well I haven't told you yet that we have all undo and redo functionality so if I click undo undo and it's gone everything is changeable and undoable so every time you mess up if you move this mountain here if you press undo well, it's back where it was. I believe we have like a uh, hundred. Uh, I think it's like a hundred steps. I believe there's even a history tab if you really want to see your edits and what you were doing. But it's uh, it's there. So again, if I want to import select a map, I import it here, for example. I'm not sure why this one is there. Apply changes. And there you go. You can you can make a tiny map and just start pasting them around. I think the height of that one didn't work. Yes, start pasting them around, and and make a kind of repeatable blueprints for maps. Now I would like to point out uh, one thing that some of you may have noticed and might have been bothered even by this little red rectangle here. That is basically our error login editor. So when this shows up red, it means some errors occurred. So let me let me see what happens. And I can see that there was some kind of a issue of about undo state. So if you see this kind of issue and you don't believe you caused it by anything that you you've done, then uh, you can copy to clipboard and file a bug report. And it's very helpful to actually get this stack trace of you know where this error occurred. Um, and once you're done with it, just clear the error so you don't be bothered by it. But whenever it lets up red again, then maybe you can check it and see whether it's something that we should know about. Uh, 
Right. So this is what I call level two of map editing, right? You can place all the features, change all the parameters, you know, go wild with the settings and, and make a map. Uh, I would like to point out that you need to consider that map's going to be played, obviously, so that, for example, starting re locations should have all the resources. You shouldn't forget, for example, about oil near starting location or the, the iron ore should be always present. You know, copper ore could be maybe a little bit on some cliff or behind some thing. Golden ore could be probably even more hidden because you don't need it at the beginning. Lots of trees everywhere. Uh, I think trees, maybe we can touch on that. I can make a little plateau here with uh, some trees and show you some configuration for, for them. So by default, we have conifers forest, deciduous forests, mixed forests, and there's also preset for uh, sparse ones. I like to use mixed because it's just you know, a good default for everything. It just gives all the trees. We have three new trees in update two, which are looking pretty pretty nice, I think. You can see among those ones. We also have some dead trees uh, mixed in. and. The way how this selects, this is not magic. Again, this is all configured here. So you can see on the right side, currently this forest is planting eight trees. You can see them all chosen here. And each tree has a weight. And basically on every location, there's a random draw from this list based on the weights. So if tree has a weight eight, it's eight times more probable than chosen the tree with weight one. If trees have the same weight, they are the same probability of choosing. Right. So, for example, fir tree, same probability as spurs tree. If I want to have this forest fur heavy, I can say, okay, the fir has probability of 30, or weight of 30. So if I regenerate, I'm going to have mostly firs. Right, there's lots of firs in this forest. Or if you want to have, I can put this back, I can even put undo. There you go, works very well. I can say, I want lots of dry trees. So I put all the dry trees with weight 10 and suddenly I'm going to have lots of dry trees in the forest. So this is a very easy way of planting large areas of forest. If I, if I uh, collapse the trees, you can see there is also some other settings. There is uh, minimum maximum spacing. So for example, if I would like to have dense forests, I can put this minimum to three or, or to four rather. And uh, well actually, in order to change that, I would have to go to the spacing function. And I think I would leave that for a little advanced topic a little later. So um, forests, uh, yeah, they require, if you want to make something specific, they require a little more configuration. But if you want to have a sparse forest, you can always choose a sparse preset, which has just a bunch of trees around. And if you want a denser forest and you don't want to deal with parameters, you can just copy paste it and uh, put two forests next to each other and they're going to be denser, right? So you can control it that way fairly easily. If you would like to have the forest to be very strict to a region, because currently it's kind of vaguely defined, right? So if I delete these forests, if I make a new forest, uh, not sparse probably. make a mixed forest and if I would like to make it oh yeah this one sorry I should make it, keep making the sparse one uh, this forest and I would make it so now the forest goes around the region I don't want that I can specify the influence distance to be like a zero and suddenly the forest is strictly in this region so the influence distance is like how far beyond the the polygon uh, is placed. So that's uh, nice to control the forest. And yeah, so this is, I think, what I would call uh, level two of complexity for our, our map editor, where you can build a map, configure all the features to your liking. But that's not all. Uh, we've put slightly more effort and and configurability into the editor, and I would like to show you show you that. 
Uh, it's gonna get a little complex, so if you don't understand it, don't worry. I think if you just use those features I just showed you, you can make beautiful maps already. But for those who really want to dig in and make the maps even more customized, there is there is more. So uh, where is the level three, what I call? So level three is once you start being curious and start opening those closed uh, toggles, right? So let me isolate this copper mountain. We can work on that. So if I open this toggle, suddenly there is loads more parameters. And those parameters are uh, not as easy to understand as the previous one, despite having all the tooltips and everything, because you need to understand what's going on under the hood while the functions are generating those mountains. So I need to give you a, a very brief introduction to how 2D noise functions work. So basically, a mountain like this is generated by taking, uh, I can quickly kind of demonstrate that, taking a distance function from a polygon, right? So I have a polygon, and its distance gives me the height. It's actually sine distance, which meaning that inside distance keeps growing. It's distance to the edges, but with a sine. So outside is negative, inside is positive. Uh, and I take this sine function and add a random kind of jiggles to it. And the random jiggles, random noise, is driven by those parameters. It's driven by a mean, which is the, the average of those jiggles, and amplitude, like how much they jiggle beyond the mean. So if I say amplitude of 5, you can see that uh, suddenly... I'll probably quickly, don't don't mind me, I just, for explanatory reasons, I'll do one more change there. Right, so you can see that the jiggles now kind of wave uh, at amplitude, maybe five is not enough, maybe I can do 10. Right, so they're kind of waving up and down. And how fast they're waving? It's based by period, so the two peaks gonna be 80 tiles away. So if I want to make them jiggle super fast, I can make it like that. And now you can totally see that these jiggles are roughly 20 tiles apart and 10 tiles high, right? So this is how mountains is made. Of course, this is more complicated than that because then in order to make a beautiful mountain, we basically put multiple layers of these waves on top of each other because now it looks kind of uh, like a bunch of sine waves kind of put on together, which is not very nice. So we can put multiple different, it's called octaves, multiple different layers on top of each other. And each layer is going to have uh, less uh, influence, it's called persistence, but more jiggly, right? The more the amplitude is going to be larger. Uh, and the frequency is certainly not up. The frequency is going to be larger. Amplitude is going to be smaller by 50%, but frequency is going to be larger by nearly twice as much. So if I enable that, suddenly you can see that the shapes get much more kind of refined, like interesting, like a, this small jiggles on top of large jiggles, and it's all kind of making this shape. So if I put the amplitude back to 5, for example, suddenly we are getting kind of cool mountain, right? And if you add erosion on top of it, you can already see something something cool. Um, there's this one parameter that controls how steep it is. So basically, the distance from polygon has a multiplier. Currently, it's minus 0 0.8, and there is minus sign because uh, by default, the distance is positive into the polygon and negative. Uh, uh, sorry, it's, it's negative, so I can push it upside, even flip it so that the mountain is not inverted. If I put positive sign here, the mountain is going to be upside down, which, you know, I mean, I guess some of you might like that, but uh, <laughs> this is not how we make mountains, so we need to put the minus sign there. But the, the amount is how much. So if I put 0.5, it's going to be less steep. If I put 2, it's going to be super steep, right? So suddenly, you have an extra parameter. You can control how steep your mountains are, which is very important if you want to make a steep mountain range. I think anything beyond 1 is probably a little too crazy, but... Um, you know, minus one is nice and steep mountain. 
and of course you can you can do even more so I have commented this ridged parameter before I'll talk about it later but that makes it more jaggedy uh, and uh, you can increase the amplitude and start playing with it I think the period was before much larger than now so you can you can start playing with it and make the shape you want right of course the polygon is now square so the mountain looks all square but it, you know that's that's level one stuff you can all already know how to make the mountain look uh, better um, so this is basically the shape so you can play with these uh, amplitude and frequencies and and see if you can get a nicer shape especially the steepness I think that's the most important one that you can make a mountains which are less steep or more steep yeah that's right uh, you can make a mountain so steep that if you dig it in, in the game it's gonna all collapse on you because of the terrain physics so in the map editor currently terrain physics is not working so you can make whatever you want or you can make uh, no, you can make anything really I mean it's really <laughs> there's no limits to your creativity but if you make this in the game and you dig it with excavator then a disaster is gonna be uh, so you need to be real careful about about that uh, and then there's more parameters than that so there's this steepness which is this multiplier for the distance function there's this amplitude and period for the noise and then there's also this cap that's basically if for example you're making a big mountain and as you make it bigger and bigger your mountain gets taller and taller because of course the distance from the perimeter is getting bigger and bigger inside and maybe you don't want that you want just like a mountain range which is big but you don't want it to go as high so you can set a cap for example I can set the cap to 20 and kind of caps smoothly caps this whole range into this kind of shape so you have like a mountain range which is capped and the cap has two parameters is a start and end it's basically from which height it's relative to the polygon you drawn to which height is kind of smoothly capped so from 0 to 20 it's a slowly start kind of capping the function and make it like that so you can you can always make it for example you can always start capping from minus 50 to 20 so you can like a smoother like a smoother shape it's not going to be suddenly cut so the wider the transition period is the smoother the cut is going to be um, yeah so yeah the term physics doesn't kick in until it's in game and we are hoping to improve this eventually uh, I should have mentioned a long time ago that of course this is a preview this is very early this is our first kind of version and uh, we are hoping to add not only that this is going to be verified in the editor but also maybe some warnings that if you have uh, some sites which are about to be collapsed even in the editor we can warn you on the map publishing that there's some problem with the map for example which you can ignore or not it's up to you really um, so that's uh, that's a cap parameter uh, and that's from mountains now we can look at plateaus plateaus have also some cool parameters so plateaus are interesting they are actually very it's like, a, like this cousin of mountain basic it's a mountain it's the same base height function as mountain same parameters same workings but it's cut with a different function it's kind of interesting so currently by default it's cut with just a constant at height zero right so that's the most yeah, simple thing uh, you can change the cutting height but I mean you could also move the whole thing up and down so changing the the height would not you know not mean much you can, you can certainly do that what's more interesting is that you can not only cut with a constant you can cut with another like a function that has jiggles on it so there is this preset which is rich plateau with cliffs and rich plateau with cliffs is the same plateau as before but this surface function which is cutting the plateau cutting the mountain is suddenly another configurable thing right so I can again say maybe I like those ridges and I would like to make them uh, less frequent maybe 100 period instead of 50 
and that's what I get. I get uh, Milka Hills. Uh, maybe I would like to get them bigger. So amplitude 10, right? So you start, you suddenly make a plateau which is kind of uh, cut by this mountain function into a surface. Right, so you can, you can, I like to use this for example for uh, like a un uneven surfaces which are mostly even. You can use your excavators to kind of even them, even them out. But it's a kind of nice obstacle for the player to to go because it's not as easily accessible, and you can make them as big as as small as you want, of course. Uh, and then there is a third function on the plateau, which is surface thickness. This is quite advanced. Basically, the plateau will replace the surface where it's cut with uh, surface material. I can put, you know, people like landfill apparently. <laughs> uh, so there is a certain amount of landfill now on the plateau and how much amount is controlled by the surface depth. Currently it's constant, uh, but again, you can pay, put a function there, but I can show you that that's gonna be the last level of complexity by playing with those functions a little more. Uh, but you can kind of configure the thickness to be variable as well. So now if I take my x-ray tool, you can see there's only one tile on top, right? As I configured instead of five. So that's nice. One also, one, one cool thing how to check those thicknesses quickly without x-ray tool is control click. So if I control click, I can even con hold control and drag. I can immediately see uh, what's on the tile and in which layers, right? So here and I can see everywhere is one tile of landfill. Uh, by the way, the landfill editor is already weathered so you don't pay pollution penalty when you launch the game. That'd be pretty brutal. Uh, you can see here, I have five tiles of grass. You can even see when the grass is mixed, how it's mixed, right? So here's a little lush region. And you can see there is uh, 0.9 lush grass and the rest of it is normal grass. So this is the, the mixing. You can see there is uh, white flowers. So that I probably should have mentioned that before. I, I forgot about flowers. Flowers are kind of a, you know, just a nice little touch to the map. They are randomly generated. It's all configurable, but you don't need to worry about it too much. If you want to explicitly add flowers, you can do so. I believe it's in, uh, where would that be? It's in here, it's in the forest tool. It's flowers patch, right? So I can basically replace Maybe I can put red flowers in this patch. It's gonna make the flowers here red. And by the way, this is nothing special to flowers. Now we know about all those parameters. The fact this is just replacing one material with another, right? This is no nothing special about flowers. I can replace iron ore in this patch and it's gonna do the same thing, right? It's, there's really no uh, limit uh, to this. You can really do whatever you wish. It's just flowers are fairly uh, nice to be able to place right away. I sometimes like to place the der bur uh, dirt, the bear, kind of barren, barren thing. I think there's a preset for that as well right away. There is a better dirt patch. Sometimes those presets have parameters a little bit better tuned. For example, you can see that the grass, which turned into dirt, looks a little more harsh and maybe a little worse than if you choose the dirt right directly, because dirt, dirt has some better parameters in this thickness function. Again, this is all driven by the function, so how much thick you get, it's a function, configure parameters. If you liked it to be bigger or smaller, you can always play with it. But those presets give you a good starting point to, to do something. For example, you can put lush grass where you want lush grass. Right, and for example, in, in these operations, the order matters. And I, I've mentioned order before, but for example, now if I have a dirt and grass, and I would like to be dirt to be overriding the grass, well, I can just bump up its priority by 10, for example, and it should be probably enough to make it work, right? So this is called relative priority. Uh, you can see the actual priority on top. So this one has 9,110. This one has 9,100. So this one gonna go after. It's from the smallest to the largest. So this is uh, 
how it works. And the inspect tool again, if I'm holding control, now I'm holding control, it's all showing me exactly the thicknesses and everything on those tiles. So very handy to inspect everything. Right, so uh, one another thing parameter which is different from others is call. So I mentioned before we use this stepped function for call. And of course it's all configurable. There's nothing special about call. There is this one more step where we specify the the steps. So for example, let me make some kind of a bigger call. So to make a bigger call, I'm going to make it steeper. I'm going to make it deeper. And now maybe the steps are too frequent, right? So I would like to make the steps less frequent. So I go to the steps uh, and, sorry, surface cover material, step parameters right here. So I can make step size five, for example. That's gonna make the steps like this. I can make them smoother. So step smoothness is now eight. I can make them five to make it kind of less steppy. And that's how it works. Yeah, people are asking, how do you know how much material is in the resource? Well, currently there, there's no estimates uh, in the editor itself because it's fairly hard to estimate uh, given how materials can kind of mix and replace each other and to, to give you kind of a grand truth. So we probably should add some kind of volume estimation for each resource. Uh, that's a good suggestion. However, you have to understand that if you have uh, one resource replacing another resource, then those totals will probably not match. So currently you don't know. Currently you have to kind of estimate by eye. A good way how to, if you played the game and you kind of know, you know, how much this would give you roughly how it's going to last me 100 years of call or something like that. You can kind of use this placement tool to, for example, get your kind of scale right, right? Because like this is how farm is. So you can see next to the farm, well, this is a fairly big mountain, right? Uh, so you kind of get your estimation of scale by trying to kind of place, you can place it, it's just preview, just to give you an idea. We will add more buildings here as well. So that's one way how to estimate it now, but in the future we can probably uh, add better estimation. Also when you publish the map, you're gonna get totals on the publishing uh, view. I can show that, but I'll have to make the map publishable. So for example, I have to make the starting location work again, which is gonna be a little tricky. Let me try to do that. Uh, so for example, I would like to make starting location go this way. So, Starting location, uh, I would like to go this way, so I need to make sure it's facing plus Y. Y is the blue arrows, uh, red is the X arrows. By the way, it's all explained in, in here. And uh, this is all green, so this is good. So let me try to publish this map real quick, so we can see. I already have some screenshots which are outdated, so I can retake them if I wish. And uh, I'll call it um, level two and call it uh, level two right here. Uh, and if I publish this map, it's going to quickly regenerate the terrain. And here in the published results, you can see all the stuff you can see in the game and more even. So this is the easy to reach resources, this is the total resources in the map, so now I can see I have, you know, 500k of coal. If I'm making a map, that's probably not enough. I think having resources above a million of each is probably a good idea. Uh, I can see I have loads of copper ore, oh my god, is it like 22 million? How is that possible? It's probably super deep, right? Or I, I've made some crazy copper mountain somewhere before, so there are a lot of copper ore there. Uh, you can see also the, like, wood and water, crude oil, right? So you can make sure that you have enough of these. Um, and this is the product stats that will be visible on the new game screen for the players. In the beginning I mentioned resource locations, right? This is the resource locations that players will see. So again, if you don't wanna show something on the map, you can you can see, for example, I can, I can even see this, everything is all right. Sometimes I can see like a stone here, which I don't wanna remove from the list. 
right now I don't see any of that so I've been pretty good at keeping that in check so this is the way how you can see uh, the resources uh, there's a question uh, about stacking virtual resources like can you put oil on top of water I think you can this is this is fine if you put a oil pump or water pump in this region it's gonna work I'm currently not 100% sure if you have overlapping resources, how that's going to work. I would have to double check. Uh, maybe Philip might know in the chat how overlapping virtual resources will be dealt with. Uh, hopefully the pump will just try to try all of them and, and see if uh, all of them are available. That's how it should be anyway. If not, then we'll fix that in the game. So that if you have overlapping waters, you know, and pump is in the middle, they can pump from both. That's how it should be. Yeah, so we have published uh, this map. And um, before we end today, we are a little over an hour. I would like to show you the level four, like the the last uh, little bit of information that you can get to get even more uh, customization, which I'm sure JD is going to love, from, from the map editor. and. It is basically looking into these text fields. Those are the most powerful, but the most complex and least refined way of editing the maps. Uh, we've put a lot of effort giving you the presets, which have all these configured correctly. But uh, there's even more you can do with this. So let me demonstrate uh, something something wacky. What, what kind of weird things we can do? We can for example, what we can do is basically this specifies how this whole function gets computed, right? So it's like a little little language that we we made for composing functions, like basically piping input of one function into another output. Sorry, piping output of function into input of another one. So for example, you can see here we compute polygon distance with some uh, uh, with some parameters and then we uh, i'm sorry I'm, I'm i'm looking at the parameters i should look at the function section so first we have parameters uh and then we have the function so first we copy the the sign distance to the polygon which gives us the distance from the polygon and then we transform it with those parameters so this polygon distance transformation parameters are the ones we were choosing the, the slope and those multipliers and all that and then we have a second function that takes those wiggles, that's a simplex noise, that we can change its amplitude and frequency, that's all the parameters there. And we pipe it into the turbulence function, and that's a function that basically sums up multiple copies of each of those previous functions with certain different uh, scales and different uh, like a weights, right? So kind of makes four copies of the function each diminishing weight but uh, higher frequency so it kind of makes the wiggles and wiggles effect and then we sum those two noises right we sum the distance from the polygon and those wiggles and we're going to get wiggles based on distance right that's that's how it works um, so for example i can add a new function that warps the coordinates for example so let me you know the, the mountain has sim so the mountain has similar but there's one more step called ridged which makes uh, takes a basic absolute value to make uh, like a sharp ridges on the on the map so i think the best way to show you this is to basically comment out everything and show you what it does one by one so let me quickly i think the comment out comment out thing is a hash sign i believe uh, oops. Comment is hash sign, yes. Right, so if I comment out this, we don't even apply changes, probably we can just see it on the preview. It's probably even easier. Right, so if I just do the simplex noise function, it's just our wiggles, right? Th that we talked about. I should probably make this flat because now it's confusing. Let me do it on the ground mountain, which is completely flat uh, 
height function. There we go. That's gonna be because before the polygon had a control points different heights, that would kind of confuse you why the height is different because it was the initial polygon. Alright, so now we have wiggles, right? That's the simplex noise. If I apply ridged on it, that's gonna make you know ridges, basically. It's gonna make it look like like a those kind of sharp edges on top. Uh, then I apply turbulence, which makes, you know, puts multiple copies of the same noise to different scales and makes those wiggles and wiggles. And then finally, I sum it with the distance from the polygon, and that's what makes uh, that what makes it into a mountain. Basically, you just you just do it. So now, for example, I would like to uh, warp the coordinates. Uh, there is a, a help tool which is very rudimentary, but it's a syntax reference for all those kind of things you can use and what parameters they take. So for example, you can see that uh, I can find the turbulence parameter somewhere. Uh, it's minimum, you can do minimum, maximum, there's a bunch of functions, there's a ridged function, here's this turbulence, right, so if you want to use turbulence, you know that you have to give it two parameters, one is one type of turbulent parameters, one is type of some seed, uh, and you can find, for example, there is this, uh, there is this warp coordinates. What it does, it takes a noise and warps coordinates so that it gets kind of stretched in different ways. So I can just add another stage to this to this function called warp coordinates. And now I know it takes uh, two parameters. I can call them just A and B just for, for simplicity, just so you can see which ones are there. And they are type of, A is type of simplex noise and B is just seeds. So I don't even need to put. That. I just use the seed, which is global to this, right? So currently it does nothing. But I have this parameter called a here, which uh, maybe I can call warp params. So we are a little bit more organized. So warp params, and I can uh, specify higher amplitude for the warping. Maybe even like super high, so you can see. And suddenly you can see kind of how it kind of stretches the mountain in different regions differently and warps it and makes this crazy shape. And, you know, you can warp coordinates, for example, before you sum it with the distance noise, right? So that's going to make it kind of more organized, warping before you make the distance. And you can play with this. You can just, you know, try and error. There's no, you know, there's no penalty for messing up. <laughs> you can just try play with this and... Uh, see what kind of shapes you can come up with. Um, I think an interesting, uh, another interesting example would be, to, for example, take a plateau and make a, like a crater in middle, right? So, for example, I can make take a plateau here and there was this, uh, I'll actually take the plateau with already, oh no, let's, let's do it from, from, yeah, from beginning. I took a plateau and, and the, remember I told you there was a cut function that specifies how you cut the surface. So why don't we cut the surface with like inverted mountain, like, the, you know, like a negative mountain uh, shape. So basically how to get a negative mountain shape? Uh, I can just take a mountain shape. Maybe I can select this, uh, select this copper mountain. And I already have uh, a mountain shape. I can just copy paste that, why not? Let me just copy paste this into here uh, and uh, well just by sheer luck I already had it but <laughs> the reason why I get it this fast is because the multiplier here is by default one remember the mountain had multi multiplier min minus something so it gets up but now if it's positive it gets down so it's cutting down into this mountain if it was negative I would still get the mountain as before but now I'm cutting I can cut maybe 0 0.5, right? And suddenly I'm cutting this plateau with the mountain. 
And then I have all the parameters as before, so all the caps, I can specify the caps and amplitudes and periods and everything, right? It's just because all the parameters have good defaults, I can just paste this and have it work. Maybe I don't want it rich, I want it smooth, so I remove the rich from here, right? Maybe I want it to be capped, maybe at minus 20. Uh, actually, this works because it's cutting, so I have to probably put 20 here. Uh, right. So from 0 to maybe minus 10, right? So it's like a shallow crater. Maybe you don't want as much ridges there, so maybe you can make an amplitude of 2 very smooth, right? And suddenly I have this, like, uh, you know, interesting shape of maybe I don't even want completely smooth maybe without any things right a little smooth little I don't know like a bowl bowl shape right made which was there's no preset for this maybe we should add a preset now I can add a preset called bowl mountain <laughs> to make this thing uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm using lots of shortcuts I don't to do telling you about cultural enter as Philip mentioned is how to kind of confirm those changes in the, or just click away I think that works too mm, and this is all kind of Cool, and uh, remember, if you make a preset like this, you can actually make a map that contains only this one feature and make it like a blueprint, right? So you can make this bull mountain into a bull mountain preset and uh, share it. Uh, I believe uh, our, our hub currently doesn't accept uh, non-completed maps, so we can improve on that. Uh, you can see that the previous kind of jaggedy and that's because, by the way, by default, the plateaus are rounded to integer coordinates to make a game playable. Because if you would make a plateau on height like 5.5, .5, you wouldn't be able to build anything on it. But uh, So you protect from that. But if you were doing wacky things like this, you, you want to allow non-integer surface coordinates, which will make this even smoother. Before it was smooth because I think erosion <laughs> helped us out to make it smooth. But now we can make this kind of a ball shape mountain and so that's basically what i call level four basically playing with those function definitions and piping the functions into different functions and, and see what what happens and and kind of play with it and you have this reference which has some documentation on how it's done but mostly you probably have to understand uh, how the functions are working and how they pop to each other and everything so I think that's it. Maybe I can try to publish this map, uh, but now it's totally uh, my starting location is totally out of out of check. So I'm let me. So you can't publish a map which is non-startable. There's a little check, so I have to make it valid at least, so I can show you how to publish it to our new hub. Let's see if it allows me. So this starting location placement is probably. Uh, one of the more annoying things in the editor, and we are aware of that because you have no feedback of what's wrong with the starting location, right? You don't know if it's the direction which is wrong. You don't know if the position if it's wrong. Sometimes the ocean is too deep. Sometimes the ocean is too shallow, uh, depending on uh, how things go. Because it's trying to basically build all the initial settlements and all those kind of things. And if something fails, it tells you that something fails, but it doesn't kind of show you visually that. It, it works. So right now I can see that it fails to build shipyard. So, oh here, here's fine. So here's the position. So sometimes you can see from the error messages what's going on. Uh, sometimes to wiggle. For example, sometimes the ocean is too shallow. Uh, so I can, uh, it's not the case now, right now, but if it was the case, I can, for example, take the flatten function, put it to, to the min, put it very small smoothing radius, and kind of cut into the coast a little bit. Or kind of smooth the coast, so the ocean gets a little deeper in here, right? This little, little, little deeper dip, uh, right? So we can kind of massage it a little bit, so that you're gonna get uh, easier starting location placements. Sometimes you need to do that, uh, or you can, for example, lower the ocean globally in the ocean settings as well. So that's how I'm usually uh, doing that. Uh, I want to quickly mention also, I haven't used much of these tools at the bottom, but there's some of them are, for example, if you want to take a nice screenshot, but not to the publishing, just to share it like on the Discord, you can hide all those handles. F11 
photo mode will also hide the UI, so you can kind of share this way. Uh, you can hide the previews. So for example, when I'm editing a huge mountain, which is like, you know, something like this, which sometimes happens, and my computer starts to be less responsive because it's just too much of a kind of refreshing, you can turn off those previews and play with the parameters and apply changes without wasting CPU on the computing of this white previews thing. And we, we recently made some optimizations, so it should be fairly fast, but if you're playing on a laptop or something, you don't want to just save some time, you can, you can turn that off. You can also turn off uh, terrain details, like grass. Uh, that also saves performance if you're hitting some FPS issues. You can, you can there's lots of uh, time spent on competing these, but then you're not going to see flowers and stuff, so you have to be careful with that. Uh, you can hide fogs. If I have a really big map and I, I start stop seeing it in the fog, uh, I can just hide it. However, though, be careful that now you're going to see some ugly edges, which you're not supposed to see normally in the game. So we probably have to improve this, but uh, just if you know that if you're taking pictures with uh, fog off, make sure that you know it's not looking. Uh, you don't you don't see those ugly shapes, and yeah, and that's I think that's all the features I want to talk about. I wonder if there are any any questions that uh, Philip haven't answered yet. I know Philip was very active with chat. Thanks, Philip, for answering all the questions when I was trying to make my bone mountain here, and, and Zach as well. Thanks, guys, for helping out. Uh, I'll publish this map into the hub now, so. I'll take some screenshots, let's see. Oh, one more, oh, one super advanced trick, I'll tell you. Uh, one super advanced trick is that sometimes when you have a big map, taking screenshots with this wide field of view, like it, it doesn't look as good. So there's this, I believe there's this console command that we kept in for, uh, for everyone that I think it's, if you, if you press a tilde, you, you get console and I think it should be set camera field of view uh, you can set it to for example 30 which kind of makes it like a narrow field of view kind of you can kind of get a compressed uh, look at the map you can even set it to maybe like 20 of course fog is in a view so you turn off the fog at this point but now you can kind of nicely uh, make like little island screenshots which are nice so I can take a thumbnail oh by the way you can disable fucking the thumbnail as well right here is a checkbox for that right away there you go so now I have this screenshot uh, of the island I can also make it here and really cool feature which we've added uh, recently is by the way if I take for example this tree and clone it I can even now, I can reset camera FOV to go back to my normal thing. Uh, and uh, I can make some, oh, this is probably too steep for trees, huh? I cannot make place trees because it's too steep. I believe there's a parameter for that. Oh, there is a, oh, here, max delta height. So I can make it uh, high so trees don't, don't mind being placed on slopes, which I don't see in the previews, which is strange. Oh, they are there. Right. Yeah, so there's a cool feature where you can actually retake all the images without doing it again. So I just click this, boom, everything is already there. No need to go back and position a camera and everything. It's all all the images will be taken from the same settings and everything. So that's that's really time saver. Uh, you guys are asking. I, I probably missed one thing. I've missed manually place trees and rocks. Yes. So there's this menu, which I should have mentioned at the very beginning, where you can just place individual trees. You know, sometimes when the generator doesn't do a good job, you can just do it manually like that. And it, uh, it works fine. Uh, you can do stones, you can do bushes. Be careful that when you do a lot of bushes, 
by default they are not traversable by car by trucks so you player will have to delete them first there's now a new remove tool for that but by default they wouldn't so we can make a can block a movement sometimes i think especially for the dry trees this is pretty cool to kind of make some kind of a maybe on the like if you have like a bare patch you can place a bunch of dry trees on the bare ground kind of like they, they, they died off if you'd like to remove them there's a remove tool and by the way this remove tool only works for those explicitly placed you cannot remove the ones part of forest which that's why we added this white glow showing which you can remove if you want to remove part of the forest it is possible you either change the forest shape or if you don't want to do that you can have restricted trees or props which is basically an area in which there are no trees so you can basically cut uh, things through forests which is kind of nice because you don't need to wiggle with the uh, forest shape or make two forests to make this work but you can just cut it and this also clears all the props by props we need stones and bushes you can uncheck that and clear only trees which means you know the rocks of this guy they're gonna stay there right so this is how that works is there anything else i forgot to mention <laughs> it turns out that there's lots of features to talk about and hard to cover them i'll totally upload this map to the hub i just want to make sure it's all covered we we'll probably make a, another stream in the future because this editor is going to be evolving and, and changing and improving so based on your feedback you know please give us all the feedback and we'll incorporate it uh, i want to publish the map again but it tells me the file already exists so i already published it so i just want to check i'm overriding because you don't want to overwrite your you know ready map with some kind of a testing accidentally so i can call it either a different name or just overwrite it and when i publish the map the publishing bridge generates all the terrain just to you know tally all the accounts and resources and everything make sure when you're taking pictures that the map is already regenerated and the pictures are taken immediately so maybe now i regenerate it i retake all the pictures to make sure oh there's actually a new uh, gap in the forest now awesome so i publish again publishing is fairly fast so now how does this work i have the map in my maps directory and i have to put it on hub so let's see i have to I have to go and have so you can open the maps directory here that's basically gonna show you the maps directory and uh, i'm gonna open the hub and uh, i'm already logged in uh, you can make account we have password let's log in pretty cool actually you don't see my screen huh because i am i'm in the game uh let me see if i can quickly fix my uh, broadcasting thing so i can add you uh, I can add the screen. Let's see what's going to be the easiest way. Uh, let me quickly check change to this. Okay, add. Sorry guys, I was not ready for... All right, this should work. Let's see if you guys can now see the hub. Let me know. I can check the screen myself, I suppose. Yes, awesome. All right, so this is hub, I'm logged in. Bunch of maps are ready, awesome and uh, i will basically add a map and all i have to do is drag map from my uh from my directory and it now show me all the things i've made right so you can see the pictures you can see the big one you know if it's good if it's not good you know you can go back to the editor retake it change it i can see there's actually a little bit of a map edge here so it's a little not as beautiful maybe i would want to expand the map to kind of make sure this is okay and if i'm all, all happy i click publish and that's it that's the map um, whenever you make a new version you can always click edit 
and you basically do the same thing. You drag and drop another file, and it's going to do the same thing. Everything is automated. So every all the information, description, and everything is taken from the from the map file, right? So for example, if I would like to go back to the game, and maybe I want to add a second starting location, right? Because our new maps support multiple starting locations. So maybe I can go. You know, by the way, this map is absolutely unplayable. I really hope nobody will play it. Maybe I should mark it on the hub as non-playable or something. Uh, I can make another, maybe hide two. I just want to make a new starting location real quick to, to see how this update process goes. Uh, if you want to make a new starting location, you can either clone the one you have or there is this starting location preset. Now I want to go to the opposite of the red arrow, which is minus x. And I probably need a little more space for the settlement to be built there. So let me extend it a little bit. Let's see if I can make the star location work. It's maybe a little too jiggly. So I can go, for example, if I want to make it less jiggly, I can reduce the amplitude of the jiggles to make it. You all know already all those, all those features. Maybe a little more straight. Yeah, star location really needs some, some work from us to kind of tell you exactly what's wrong. Because if I, I'm being told fill to build shipyard, I'm pretty sure this is yeah, this is not enough height. Uh, so I can go again, use the flatten tool to add more add more depth to, to this, for example. Or just uh, choose different location for now. I don't want to be dealing with it right now. So let me maybe put it here. And this is going to be plus x now instead of minus x. And I need more space for the settlement, most likely. All right, let's see if uh, maybe not enough space. Yeah, I think it's the, it's the ocean depth might be too deep at this point, my God. Very tricky to place this. Uh, Let's see if any of those locations are okay. Maybe I can also try minus y. Yeah, this is gonna take me some time to I basically have to go and and make sure that the ocean might be a little too deep here. Oops, no, I want a little more. Because shipyard placement, I I can actually take uh the shipyard itself, the cargo rather, and try to place it. We can see this doesn't want to be placed because I think it's too deep, the ocean. So, well, anyhow, I don't want to stretch the stream, just me trying to wiggling with this. It's uh, It takes time to make it the ocean not as deep and then make it uh, coastal uh, smooth. But what I wanted to show you, first of all, you can make second location. Second of all, you can put description. So you click set value and now you can see this is harder and you pick maybe insane starting difficulty. So when you do this on the map, it's gonna show you that this is a hard start and players can have some more information about what's going on in this in this area. Right, so this is this is how it goes. Yeah, is there anything else I, I forgot to mention? This is little Unfortunate that my map gas doesn't want to help me with quickly making the start location work. It also clearly shows that we need to improve this in the game because it's a little finicky to, to place it. Yeah. Unfortunately, oh, this is probably not even straight. Yeah. You have to be kind of aligned to the axis. The arrows are your best friend to kind of be able to align the, the coast direction because our buildings can be only in four directions. So this one... In the earlier version of Editor, by the way, we didn't have this validation, so I have to basically guess and then load the game and try, and then <laughs> that didn't work very well. So we added at least this basic validation. But even, even this is not enough. We need to... Uh, yeah, I wonder what's going on with this. Seems to me like it's fine. Maybe it's not deep enough. Two tiles. Uh, can I try to just put flatten? 
Latin region, I put explicit height of minus four. That should be totally acceptable uh, height for shipyard, maybe a little wider. Uh, all right, how about now? Minus four might not be minus five. Transition distance, maybe a little smoother transition, not too smooth. Uh, yep, I guess uh, there might be some issue, uh, or maybe a bug even, that somehow it's preventing me to place. We had this command called validate, validate, validate and fix. Uh, no, I don't see it. Yeah, all right, well, there you go. Uh, one thing I, I failed doing, trying to find an extra location here. And if you have problems like this, please let us know. Share us the map, right, so we can see what was the issue and, and fix it, hopefully, so that uh, people will not be hindered by this in the future. I think this uh, flatten is also not doing too good of a job. Oh, because I didn't set explicit height. Well, that would explain a lot, actually. My god. Oh, now it's flattening. Still. Hmm, that's so strange. Yeah, there's gonna be some kind of bug here. Some kind of weird state that the editor got into that somehow it's uh, not placing. So, yeah. Uh, Uh, is there any other questions that I can answer before we wrap this up for today? I'll just look at the chat real quick. Right, so this question that whether the Ethereum physics is somehow baked in, it's not. So current Ethereum physics in the editor is disabled. So we can see you can make a, a sand wall, uh, which obviously if you load the map, it's gonna stand, but the first time you're gonna dig in with your excavator, it's gonna all apply the physics and it's gonna all collapse. And you know, if you wanna make a trap for someone that if they dig into uh, some kind of a uh, you know valley and they're gonna <laughs> make it impossible, sure, you can do that. Uh, but I would encourage for now to kind of use um, your eye to kind of estimate whether it's fine or not. Uh, I think if you're not gonna go on the slope more than minus 0.8, for example, you're probably safe on the mountains. On the sand, I would really try to be, kind of make like a beaches and dunes, don't make any, any steep features with those because they're gonna like to fall down a lot. Uh, another question uh, was that, whether the reduced transition area for mountain, the grass radiates far. Uh, right, so I think the question is that there's so much, too much grass around mountains at the bottom, is that true? You wanna control how much this kind of grass put on the, uh, put on the, base of the mountain and uh, the answer is yes it's configurable but it's a little complex you can dive into the post processors and find the the grass on rocks and and try to configure it through here right so if you want to for example decrease the coverage globally 50 percent you can do that but it's going to do it everywhere right so you can kind of make a map which is have more barren mountains that's all uh that's all that. Uh, if you want to make it locally, for, like for one mountain, if you have one mountain with less grass, your best bet is replace material. Replace material has this interesting property called how much it's kind of replacing. So you can say, 
I want to keep the grass on rocks on whatever it was. So I think it was 110 percent. But uh, in this area, uh, in this area, I want to replace 50 percent of grass with nothing. I kind of like make it maybe make a big transition so it's not as sharp, and kind of make it like that, right? So it's it's not going to be perfect. But it, it might do just the effect that you want that this side of mountains for for some reason has no grass, less grass. Other sides still have the normal amount. So you can certainly explore those post processor settings. I, I think I will not currently go to all of the settings there. You can kind of see what's possible and uh, what's not and, and see if you can achieve the result that you have. For example, there is this Thing that mixes the two types of grass, right? So we have lush grass and non-lush grass kind of mixed together. You can see this little patch. If I don't want that, for example, I can disable that and it's gonna not do the mixing. So you can have one type of grass on the entire island if that's something which you want, for example. Yeah. Oh, I think somebody was commenting on the shipyard issue about my uh, height of the feature possible yeah that could have been that my that's right the base height of one that might have been the problem from all along so let me try to fix it see if we can make it work now I have this one also delete let's see if if now the shipyard oh base height two I thought I changed that Let's see if now it wants to build it. Hmm. Still not. But there's lots of uh, tricky thing. Oh, there you go. Here you can build it for some reason. Yeah, so I think it was the problem because it was too low. It was base height of one. And I think she part needs at least two. So maybe I should add that. Or we should add that to the warning that you have to not only check your direction, but also the, the base height, I think, from 2 to 4 is, is good. Uh, but the higher it gets, it, it's harder to place. So now I can actually show you, if I publish the map again, I can go up, retake my screenshots, boom, and publish. Uh, I'm going to have a new file. Well, it's going to be the same file on my hard drive, but I have to go to hub. Uh, where's my hub? Right here. I can click edit. I can drag and drop the new updated file. It's going to show you the new updated map. And you can click publish. And now there's a version. And there you can even see uh, now this is the previous version. Now it's a new version. And I, I've heard a feedback that we can probably show the map name or map size in this version history so you kind of know that, you know, what's going on in the history so you have a better idea. That's, that's a good suggestion. I think we can add that. Uh, I can also, at the very end, I can try to open the map. So if I play a new game, level 2. Oh, before I do that. So if you choose the map, you can see here. You have the two starting locations you can choose. The one I selected was insane. I put some description here. Um, you can also use this drop down to, to choose the locations. Um, and here, if you click show on the map, this is the notes that I marked as resource they're going to be showing in the map. So the players can, can know roughly where your resources are. If they're underground, you can choose to show it or not. You can hide it. It's up to you what, what you can see. It's up to the map maker to kind of make it nice. You can even zoom it in and see it even better what resources they have. We would love to include counts or something like this, but it's quite hard to compute because if you have two mountain ranches that are connected, then how would you split the counts? It's uh, maybe in the future we can figure out some better way of uh, of showing this. But so far, you're gonna get this map resource overview, and uh, you should know that there's this toggle for uh, easy resources versus all resources, right? So. If you untoggle it, you can see everything on the map. But that could be super deep, it could be under the ocean, and for, for players you wanted to omit all these. So basically, as the tooltip says, the simple resources show just resources which are easy to reach, not as deep, and not under the ocean. So that's uh, what you should pay attention to. So, you know, I have 3 k waste, waste. Very nice. And that's it, right? So if I just launch the map, it should make me a shipyard, and that's it. Uh, 
Um, we've removed some of the options from that were previous in the game. For example, previously you can change the cliff height and change the resources depth and all those kind of options. And these were removed. And the reason was that uh, it was making the map making so much complicated because the map author would have to manually verify that each uh, setting was correct. For example, if I increase map resources or map or cliff height, suddenly the map could be unplayable because the starting location wouldn't work or, you know, so many other things could go wrong. So we thought that this is no longer needed because if you want to have two versions, one version with extra cliffs, just use the editor and make extra cliff version and uh, publish two versions of the same map. One is normal, one is extra cliffs, right? So this is all possible now. Um, so this is the reason why we kind of remove the starting options and also makes the maps kind of, everybody plays on a single map has the same experience. There's no difference between uh, the map based on the settings. So we encourage to make different maps and link them each other in the description, for example, so you can have players to be notified about that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for, for joining us today. Uh, please give us feedback, what can be improved, what can be changed. And we are we are really looking forward to see what kind of maps you're going to make. So thanks again. Thanks again, Captain Philip and Zaf for answering all the questions that, that I missed. And if you have any further questions, hit us on Discord. We're going to be there. Uh, the lunch is going to be on the April the 5th. So up until then, you all the Canary members can play with the editor in the existing version. Everybody else, hang tight. It's less than a week away on Friday. It's going to be all available to all of you and we are looking forward for your creations. All right. Thanks everyone and see you next time. Bye.